This week in the clinic, I got to see Pat Rainey. It was great to see him again. I fused his back about 10 years ago. He was doing great until a week before a visit in the clinic and something went seriously wrong. Pat had some knee trouble. He laid off his usual five mile a day exercise walk. And when his knee got better, he went out and did the walk. And sure enough, a day later, bam, extreme back pain and pain shooting down the leg. If you've ever had sciatica, pain down the leg due to an inflamed or compressed herniated disc, I just wanna say, I am sorry. It is wicked painful. It's more pain than a lot of people have ever experienced. It's kind of childbirth-like pain. If you've had that kind of pain, then one thing, one light bulb went off in your mind. You had one question, and that is, what happens now? That's the purpose of this video. We're gonna answer that question, and if you've had sciatica, or if you're having it now, we're gonna tell you what you need to do. What's the best treatment for a herniated disc? It depends on some things, but it's either gonna be oral anti-inflammatory medications, an epidural steroid injection, or microdiscectomy surgery, or some combination of all of those. Well, this is it. We're gonna bring everything together and describe how a herniated disc has occurred. You've had a tear in the annulus, the nucleus pulposus is sticking out, there's compression of a nerve root, you had a back ache that then progressed into sciatica. Okay, great, doc, what do you do? Well, the first thing you do is ask yourself, are there any red flags? Is there any numbness or weakness that if it were to become permanent would impact the way that you function? Yeah, maybe I got a little bit of weakness in my ankle, but even if I was that way forever, I would hardly notice it. That's not functionally limiting weakness. Yeah, my foot's a little numb, but I mean, I didn't even notice until my wife scratched it. That is not functional limiting weak numbness. Functionally limiting means if you had that permanently, it would affect the way that you function. So if you've got significant functionally limiting numbness or weakness, uncontrollable pain, or any red flags, history of cancer, uh, vomiting, uh, blood, passage of blood in the stool, any of those t uh, shakes or chills, if none of that is happening, then you're okay to do three things. Rest, get moist heat, get in the shower and let the hot water run on your back, and take anti-inflammatory medications, usually either Aleve or ibuprofen, along with Prilosec to control the acid in your stomach. All right, we're three weeks into it and that's not working. Pain's still there. It's time to get an MRI scan of your back. If you have pain shooting down your leg, it's probably a herniated disc. And if it is a herniated disc and the pain is severe, you're a good candidate for an epidural injection. But you can't get an epidural injection until you've had an MRI that shows, confirms that it is a herniated disc. So most people would see their primary care doctor when it first happens. The primary care doctor will get an X-ray to make sure it's not an infection, cancer, or from trauma. So assume, and the x-ray is almost always net normal. X-rays don't show herniated discs, right? So the x-ray is normal. Three weeks goes by, pain's still there. See the doctor again, you need an MRI. You get the MRI, the MRI shows a herniated disc. Now you're a good candidate to see a pain management doctor to do an epidural injection. What's an epidural injection? You know, most people think, when, you, when I say epidural injection, what do you think of? pregnancy, right? Childbirth. Epidural is a pain control injection that can control pain no matter what it's from. But in the case of a herniated disc, it's even better because the herniated disc is actually in the epidural space. So the good news is epidural injection can usually control the pain of a herniated disc. The bad news is it wears off. So the medication, the steroid in an epidural steroid injection, Average lasts about 100 hours. So you get your epidural injection and 100 hours later, if that disc is still there, the whole cycle is just gonna start again. And that may be the case, but first of all, you get 100 hours of relief. And second of all, you may succeed in just tampering it down and then it's your body's healing and it just doesn't come back all the way up. If the epidural injection wears off, and remember, you're gonna get better on your own 
in 12 weeks, 84% in six weeks. So what if you had an epidural injection every two weeks, right? So that's where the three epidural injections comes from. Get an epidural injection. If it worked great, but it wore off, you get another one. If it worked great, but it wore off, you get another one. If it worked great, but it wore off and you're still having pain, so you have uncontrollable pain after 12 weeks or functionally limiting numbness or weakness, then you're a good candidate for surgery. Look, nobody wants back surgery unless this pain is zinging down your leg and, and just absolutely killing you. And then you'll be begging for something called microdiscectomy. Microdiscectomy is a half inch incision in your back. The neurosurgeon or fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon, spine surgeon, goes in and look, looking under a microscope, drills off, shaves off a little bone and takes out the herniated disc fragment. Not the whole disc, right? You need that disc to be a shock absorber and all the rest. Just the part that has come through the rent, just the nucleus pulposus that is sticking out. That's what they're gonna remove. That operation is called microdiscectomy. Does it work? Yeah, it really does. In studies, randomized controlled trials of microdiscectomy versus no surgery. This is the interesting part. If you look two years after the herniated disc, the groups are exactly the same, which is what you would predict. Remember video one of this series? Does a herniated disc get better on its own? Yeah, that's what normally happens. So two years out, everybody's the same, but the people who had surgery got better the day of surgery. The people who didn't have surgery slowly improved as their body digested and absorbed the herniated disc. Well, I hope this, I hope this explains to you what your options are. In Pat Ranney's case, he had a giant disc herniation. He had functional weakness on um, examination and the MRI confirmed that the disc herniation was so large, it was gonna be hard for him to get better on his own. So instead of recommending epidural injection, which would have been an option for him, he chose to go forward with microdiscectomy surgery. There's some other complications with him. We'll come back and show you the rest of Pat's story as it evolves. I hope these videos on herniated disc were helpful to you. It's a very common problem. It can be serious. It usually gets better by itself, but there's some stuff you gotta know to make sure you're in the right group and taking care of yourself the right way. All of that information is in this series. Stay tuned to the clinic to get all of the information you need to take proper care of your body as you age. And find out what happened to Pat on future episodes.